What's up guys? Today we're gonna do, oh, hey. This is my buddy Travis. Hi. Travis and I have been friends for a long time. What is it, like 20? 20 years. 20 years. Something like that. Something like that. Just about as long as Travis has owned this 96 Integra SE. And today we got the opportunity, Travis more specifically, got the opportunity to compare the new Type S to his Turbo Integra. And it's funny because they're both Turbo Integras that put down a very similar amount of power. Yeah. So, what this, do you think? This one, mine, uh, is about 290, 295 at the hub, so I call it 300. And it only weighs about 2,700 pounds with a full tank of gas. Um, and this one is also about 300 pounds. It's 320 uh, from Acura. A lot of people on their dynos have been getting in the 290s at the wheel. Um, just probably a little bit more at the hub, but it weighs 3,200 pounds. So it's like 500 pounds heavier. Yeah. Obviously it's a four door. It's got, you know, all the luxury stuff, more airbags, um, but it's, it feels very similar to drive, strangely enough. Um, the transmissions, while they're obviously different, separated by nearly 30 years, this is a 96, this is a 2014. Um, the, the throw of the transmission, the feel in your hand, like Honda has not lost that feel from 30 years ago, the 90s cars in the manual that's in this, which it's only manual. Mm -hmm. The base Integra you can get with an automatic or a manual, but the Type S is essentially a Civic Type R, an FL5 Type R underneath. And so it has exclusively a manual. And it's really good. It's got, you know, rev match if you want to do that, if you want to put it into that. Oh, so it's automatic rev match when you don't shift? Automatic rev match. That's pretty awesome. It's pretty nice if you're just driving around in traffic and you forget about it sometimes. Um, you know, I like to leave it on. Some people will change that. It's also a hatchback, which the Integra was originally and which mine is. Um, you know, there are generations of it. You know, the sedan, for example, from this generation, from the 94 to 97, wasn't quite a hatch, but I like that this one's a hatch. I think it's super practical. Yeah. Um, I also think like there's a lot of little touches that you might not notice if you weren't an Integra enthusiast. If you weren't a fan of this car that you wouldn't notice like for example the embossed i don't know if it's embossed or i guess it's just stamped logo yeah on the front bumper here i love that it's the same as the stamped logo on the front bumper from same my font car. and that's not something that happened in every integra generation you know like rsx's didn't get that um and that's i think that's a really cool nod like obviously the designers were nerds uh you know that like like this kind of stuff uh and I think they're both really good to drive. Front wheel drive platforms are both super nimble. Obviously my car feels lighter. I think sure. the steering is a little bit more direct, yeah. but in terms of what you can get for this money, especially in a front wheel drive platform these days, there's not really much like it. You, know, you can get like the Elantra and you can get the GR Corolla, uh, but that's a little smaller. And you know, like that car's all wheel drive. I just think the dynamics are a little bit different. And I think this is a little bit more luxurious. It's also more expensive. Than it's the GR definitely Corolla. styling and luxury are definitely like pluses on this yeah. over the GR Corolla. And I opinion. think we were talking about this earlier too. I think the styling on this is going to age really well. Yeah, I, think I agree. The fender flares mm -hmm. are tasteful, but you go, oh, that's different than the regular car. And obviously they had to do that to accommodate the Civic Type R underpinnings. Yeah. So the standard Integra doesn't have those because it's narrower. It doesn't have the same uh, wheel width. And also these are wider wheels, the Brembo brakes, and all of that stuff I think fits really well into this package and it naturally sits in a really nice way. Like, I don't think I would do too much. I mean, I say this, but then- <laughs> Yeah, right. I, you know, I say I wouldn't modify it, but immediately my brain goes to what I would do to modify it. But I could see someone owning one of these as a daily and a weekend car, as an everything car, as a one car solution and not doing a thing to it. Like, don't mod it, don't change it. It doesn't need more power. It doesn't need more brakes. It doesn't need more tires. You know, it's got Pilot Sport 4S's on it. Yeah. It's got big old Brembo's. It's plenty car. And like, I think it looks really good too. It's a really good looking angle. car. Yeah. Excellent looking car, which, you know, there were some really cool color options for those as well. Uh, not this year, but the other years they had the Sonic Blue, that kind of stuff. Like. That's yeah, SSBP yeah. was an awesome color. There DVP, was another, was the dark violet pearl. The, gray, the green, and yeah. there was Milano red. Like, I think Acura gets that. 
Yeah. Like they're like, yeah, people want cool colors. Yeah. So we're going to offer it in cool colors. You know? No, for sure. And Acura, well, yeah, Acura. Sunroof, paint. which my car does, but my car wasn't a Type R. So like the Type R, this doesn't, the oh, old Integra Type R. Interesting. This doesn't have a sunroof. Keeps weight down a little bit. I think about like, you know, 70 pounds That's or something. That's three things I've learned about this car today. One, that it was actually a proper hatch. Yep. One, that it only came in a stick shift yep. only. And now that it doesn't have a sunroof option even, yep. Which also, is... the difference between this and the Type R, so the Type R does not have heated seats. This does. Luxury mm -hmm. up a little bit. This also has an excellent ELS stereo that the Type R doesn't get. I think, you know, MSRP is a couple grand more than the Type R, but I think it's worth it. I think it's the better choice. Yeah, for sure. So as far as uh, embodying the spirit of this car, you think they nailed it? So I think comparing the spirit of these two cars there's an important point to be made that the Integra in its day, like the Gen 3 Integra that everybody knows is like the yeah. most famous one, um, was a better version of the Civic. Essentially, mm -hmm. the Civics at the time had V16s, there was the SI. You know, we didn't have the Type R in America at that point, at least not a Civic Type R. And this was a more luxurious, better driving, highly kind of tuned up version of the Civic. And that's exactly what this is. Right. So to compare any car 30, you know, compare a Camaro from today to a Camaro from 30 years ago or a Mustang from today to a Mustang of 30 years ago, you know, they're not going to be the same. Like, yeah. oh, what's a Fox body like compared to it? These cars aren't the same, but mm -hmm. they do the same thing. Yeah. This car, when it was new, was an excellent daily driver, had luxury, could be fun on the weekends and could also get your family places, you know, especially when you didn't take out the back seat like I did on the Yeah, car. right. Same thing with this one. You could show up to your job, your like mid-level management job in these and get respect from your coworkers, but also drive the hell out of it on the weekend and like have a lot of fun. Take it to track they, days. They both do the same tricks. Yeah. And they come with fact, you know, like factory warranty. You could take this and, and rip on it all the time and it would still be a great car. I, I think that's a, a great point in terms of like, you really can't compare tech from modern day cars to tech from cars from this would be 28 years old now. Yeah. Or like you're saying with Camaros, when like the Camaro came came back out in what was like 05 around that time and you can't compare it to like a 69, yeah. like it's it just, it won't, it's not possible, you know? So you know, obviously the technology has come a really long yeah, way. I mean, this thing doesn't have blind spot monitoring or right forward collision alert or side airbags or any of the stuff that this does to keep you safe. Like yeah. obviously it had good, you know, safety tech for the time, but this thing has so many features that that doesn't have. So it's going to be a little heavier. The steering is going to feel a little different, you know, but it's quieter on the inside, even compared to like a stock Integra of that day. Like this thing is, you know, super smooth on the highway, quiet, better seats, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think it kept the spirit and it updated it really well for 24. You know, going up against stuff like the Audi S4, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd get this. That's a any that's day. a no-brainer to yeah. me. <laughs> I wouldn't really buy Audi anything though. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have anything to add? Someone asked me if I would like drive this as opposed to if I would trade in my Integra, and the answer is no, but only because of sentimental value. Yeah. Like. If I just had the choice between the two of these and they were the same price, which absolutely wouldn't happen, because um, that thing's a shit box. Um, <laughs> but like, it's a shit box with class and, yeah. and blow off valves. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And actually, a lot of power. But like, if you're looking to get an enthusiast car exper experience, compact car, yes, it's expensive, but I think it's worth the money. I think there's there's nothing else in the class that does what this thing does. Yeah, I mean, and it's got so much presence uh, as we've been driving around today and I've been, you know, following it, driving in front of it, seeing it on the road, um, especially with the, you know, with the exhaust, the tri-exhaust tips. Um, you know, the fact that you can do burbles if you want from the factory, I believe, right? Yeah, um, so you can put it in individual mode or sport mode. You can change, you can match the, uh, the exhaust um, to a comfort setting and individual, you just have to select it every time you start the car. But yep. That means when you start it up in the morning, you're not going to wake up your neighbors. That's true. There you go. I love that.
the styling of it. I uh, love the presence of it. I love that it actually is a luxurious car that you can only get in a proper manual that is, you know, it's it's yeah, an enthusiast who, who car. Who makes a car that you can only get in a manual? Yeah, it's like, just so like good. Three options. Yeah, it's it's so cool. I think I think they really uh, accomplished what they set out to do. Um, it sounds like this is kind of going to be the last of the high performance combustion engines from Honda and Acura. We'll see, you know, they're, yeah. they're, we'll see the hybrid just came out, so we'll see if they can start, Hopefully. you know, adding hybrid systems to cars for performance, like they have, you know, like other auto, auto manufacturers have done at the top end, but, you know, this, we always say it every time a new high performance comes out, high performance car comes out the last 20 years, we've been saying, oh, that's the last one, it's the last one, but things are really... You know, Ac Acura has said they're going all electric yeah. um, by 2030. Um, so, you know, it might be might be time to get one if you, if you want something with internal combustion. Yeah, if you can afford it, you might want to get this car. <laughs> And, and if you can't afford it, you and might, if you can't afford it, get an old Integra and turbo it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's gonna do it for our uh, comparison. Thank you so much to Travis. My pleasure. Check dude. him out online. Thanks for automotive journalist, my car, buddy. Huh? Thanks oh for yeah. My car driving up here. It, it took me a minute to get used <laughs> to driving an Integra again. It's it's been a while, but it was a lot of fun, especially compared to 350Z transmission wise, which I need to work on. But Honda I digress. Manuals, baby. Yep, Honda manuals are the supreme manuals. Uh, that's going to do it for the video. Let us know what you guys thought of the video in the comments down below. If you have any questions uh, about anything specifically or want to see any specific content, definitely let us know in the comments down below as well. And if you liked the video, please make sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell. We'll see you in the next one. We appreciate you. Peace.